planning had began almost two years before. As the moment began to creep closer and closer, Allied forces had the difficult task of putting their plan into motion while not tipping their hand to the Germans. By June of 1944, the moment of the greatest military invasion in history had arrived. On the other side, Adolf Hitler had been preparing for an invasion of Nazi-occupied Europe whether he knew one was coming or not. The construction of the wall took roughly the same two years that the Allies had been preparing. With the goal of repelling an attack at any point along the Atlantic coast, the defensive system known as the Atlantic Wall was over 1,600 miles long and made up of a network of hundreds of bunkers and strong points, massive coastal guns, various forms of artillery ranging from light to heavy, a connected trench system, and thousands of German infantry. The wall was the main part of Hitler's fortress Europe. With the Allied preparations finished and the commander's addresses having been made, all that was left was for the business at hand to be attended to. First were the paratroopers. In the dark hours of the morning on June 6, 1944, the airborne divisions of the Allied invasion force flew through heavy anti-aircraft fire while en route to their drop zones. Then, as the dawn was breaking at approximately 6.30 a.m., the beach landing started. Preceded by massive naval and aerial bombardments as well as the airborne assault, Allied infantry and armored divisions began to come ashore under blistering German fire. The target was a 50-mile stretch of beach broken into five sectors, Utah, Omaha, Juneau, Gold, and Sword. Strong winds, ocean currents, and pre-laid defenses such as mines and barbed wire made the landing even more treacherous, especially for the men coming ashore on Omaha Beach. Here, in addition to the stout defenses and the other battle chaos, the Allies found themselves attacking against steep cliffs. It is here where the casualties will be the heaviest. Even though the invasion successfully gained the Allies a foothold on the continent, none of the D-Day objectives were achieved until some days following the initial landing. Towns like Carrington and Bayeux were still held by the Germans and wouldn't fall for several more days. Kane would prove to be a more formidable objective not being carried until July 21st, D-Day plus 45. Only Juno and Gold Beaches were linked on June 6th, and it would be June 12th before all five beaches were linked. The Atlantic Wall, which had taken two years to build, had been breached in a matter of hours. Hundreds of thousands of Allied soldiers began pouring onto the French soil. The beginning of the Second World War had started. It would be less than a year from June 6, 1944, the day of days, when Berlin would fall and Germany would surrender. Adolf Hitler would commit suicide in his bunker just days before the end of the war. The cost of the invasion into France came at over 10,000 Allied casualties, with 4,414 confirmed as dead. Today, Normandy has returned to being a quiet and peaceful place, however now a place of deep reverence and reflection. There are cemeteries and memorials to all the men who landed as part of the Allied forces in most towns nearby and on every beach fought over. Many of the locals still referring to them simply as the Liberators. Some of the grounds remain as they were left in June of 1944. Visible today are bomb craters and concrete gun emplacements along the shore, and even a few of the beach obstacles remain. For all the men who took part in the action, it was most certainly the day of days, and for many, the last day.